What's up everyone, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to master Mirage. Mirage is probably my second best legend in the game. I'm very good with him. I used to be absolutely fucking cracked with him before um, the recent buffs, and um, I'm still learning myself on how to kind of get used to the, the bus, even though it's been a full season. But I think I'm actually kind of ready to uh, release a tutorial on this character. Mirage is definitely one of the hardest characters you can learn in Apex Legends. And I will explain why very shortly. Um, so, on my main channel, I did a similar guide like this, but for Caustic, which is my main. And I divided it into three videos. I don't know if I'll be doing three videos uh, with this series. It just kind of depends how much I ramble on. Because there's definitely a lot to talk about when it comes to Mirage. I mean, like, a lot. What's up everyone? So now I'm at the fucking firing range, and now I'm going to kind of be starting out extremely simple. I want to keep it simple at the beginning, so uh, I can kind of ease into the more hard stuff when it comes to his abilities. We're not going to talk about the abilities quite yet. We're going to talk about weapons. Weapons that Mirage really benefits from are the extremely high damage weapons that you can kind of you can cut you can you can deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So the Mastiff, the Eva. Um, if you can get lucky, you can totally use an R9 and a Peacekeeper. The Peacekeeper is very good, very good for this, because, uh, actually, I guess I'll go into that in a second, because it's kind of in the same boat as the Eva, but uh, you'll see in a second. The Vault's very good on him. I wouldn't recommend a Devotion or a Havoc unless you can uh, fully kit it out and get the Turbocharger and, like, uh, some good attachments on it. Um, I would, for the most part, kind of stay away from the snipers, but if you yourself enjoy using snipers, then the most important part when it comes to weapons is using the weapons that you are most comfortable with. But really, I'm just giving my suggestions, so if you want to use a sniper, please do. Heavy weapons. A uh, wingman. Prowler. Uh, possibly flatline. You can use the hemlock as well, but again, it's like a thing that I... I you could do it, but I wouldn't recommend it. And the R301. Those are the weapons that I would recommend myself. That's because with those weapons, you can kind of you can kind of ease in and out of being extremely offensive. And what I mean by that is, um, here, let me go ahead and grab an Eva. Actually, no, we're gonna grab a PK because I like PKs. Okay, so, um, here, um, all right. Let me kind of set up a small example really quick. So pretend that I managed to get close to this dummy. Um, pretend this is just a pretend this is just a real dude, okay? So um, let's say that I've kind of popped my ult kind of around here, and then I'm kind of just chilling right here. He doesn't know which one's the real me. He's freaking the fuck out. He's kind of spraying everywhere. This is the best opportunity for me to kind of be at a position right here where he's not really looking at me, but I can pop a shot real quick, move into cover, and when he looks right there, I can be in a new spot, and then boom, shoot him again, and then hopefully he'll be down by then. So, um, it kind of looks like this in practice. It's he's freaking out, shooting everywhere. Go up here, he looks right there, and then I'm in a new spot. something like that. That's kind of what it would look like in practice. Um, but like I said, uh, the Eva, the Eva's a good gun for this. Um, um, you you could do the double dab on it as well. Uh, let me find the double dab. Okay. So boom. Hella decoys. Me. Hella decoys everywhere. He's confused. Shoot him. Come up here. Like that. Very easy. Um, uh, so, honestly, like I said, super simple. Nothing really extremely complicated for me to actually go over right here. Uh, just, um, that's kind of how you want to use the weapons. You want to be able to stick to Mirage's powerful range, which is kind of the mid to close distance. Um, because, like I said, with the weapons that he benefits the most from, they're not usually... Um, long-ranged weapons. So, 
um, just um, stick to what he benefits from the most. So once again, I'll show it again. Send a decoy. Fuck ton of decoys. He's freaking out. Shoot him. Move to a new position. Shoot him again. Because these decoys allow you to quickly move into an offensive state to shoot him really quick. And then, with the decoy still active, it allows you to kind of smoothly back into defense, into offense once more. That's really what he benefits from. He's able to he's able to kind of go to the. It's kind of like caustic, honestly. Uh, not really as well as caustic, but he's he's re he's able to really easily move to the defense to the offense extremely well. So, um, yeah, I think next we're going to talk about his ultimate, and then his, uh, his L1, his decoy, him out with a decoy. and then we're going to talk about his, um, his passive, I think, and then that will be it. I don't really, like I said, I don't know if how in-depth I'm going to go, but we will see. Okay, so we're going to talk about his ultimate now. So, um, really quick, I just want to say his ultimate, like I said before, it's really good for being able to kind of go from the offense to the defense so really you want to take advantage of that um, so when you first activate your ult I would say you're in an offensive state okay so say I'm running this way and I pop my ult right here do not continue to go straight okay you want to change directions to go into your offensive state because if you're standing right here and you see a mirage activate his ult and you see him running straight the first thing to do the first thing that this person right here is gonna do he's gonna look to where the mirage is running which is over here but in reality you did something like this so clock so then now he's looking over there and you're in an offensive state shoot him once and then do like I said before go into a different position he's still looking at decoys right here and then you're able to kill him it's pr it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. Um, so then now I also kind of want to um, um, go over using this as an escape. Usually, people you, usually guys you don't want to actually use his ultimate as an escape, but it can totally work. It can one hundred percent work because um, if you do some if you do some bullshit. Um, uh, kind of like this. Okay, so say um say this they say this is a real person, and he's chasing me, uh, cause he 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 broke my armor, and I'm like half health, right? I'm kind of low, but I got my ult and I have my decoy. I know I can escape, right? So then let's uh, just watch this. Watch this, right? I'm going to use the technique to where I changed, um, I changed uh, routes. I changed my my route when I the second I activate my ultimate. So watch this. Say this guy's chasing me. I run straight. I want to throw my decoy. Sending out my decoy. And then activate my ult whilst going like left. And then the second active the ult goes, pop right. So then um it'll kinda look something like this. So dude's chasing me. Pull the decoy. To the Sending out a decoy. Using and the then decoy escape. Just attempt to run away. And then you have something like eight decoys on the field at once, or seven decoys on the field at once. It's it's quite a lot, um, but really the, the 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 decoy at the beginning, that was really kind of supposed to represent the um the the um the mirage after kind of using your ultimate. You know how I said before that if this person sees you activate your ult whilst running straight. And then the second the animation for the ult is over, they see this motherfucker right here running straight. The first thing that person's gonna do is shoot that decoy. And then like, well fuck, that was just a decoy, that wasn't the actual one. So then now they're gonna look at the decoys from the ultimates. And then by that time they're all spread out and shit, running in circles, freaking everybody out, and then they're confused as hell while you're in a corner, like healing. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that type of thing that really makes Mirage a, a good pick so I guess what I'm actually about to say could be something a little more complicated but 
um, it's actually quite easy in practice, I think. Um, so, let's say you're kind of in a weird spot, like maybe in a building, so it's kind of hard for you to kind of shoot someone and then kind of safely move into a different direction and then shoot them once more. I kind of want to, I want to show you guys this, okay? So, um, I want to talk about movements while you're, uh, after the activation of your ult has happened, okay? So, um, just, so uh, this is kind of what I see people y usually do. This is what I usually see when I see a Mirage player, okay? Decoy escape deployed. So activate the ult, and then they'll do this, right? And then they'll, and then they'll, they'll pretend it's just like a normal fight. And then they forget they have all these decoys to help them. So, um, really quickly, let me kill him. Then let me kind of get an ultimate accelerant really quickly. I want you to try your best to make it to where say there's a, say you're you, you, say these all the decoys are around me right I shoot them right I shoot them right here and then I kind of want you to move with your decoys and kind of switch places with them even though this person clearly saw you do it but the thing is if they if they um if they follow you while you do it, they'll kind of notice the fact that you start to blend in with the crowd of your decoys. And that's kind of something that is, like I said, a little more complicated, but it, I guess it would look something kind of like this. So, um, before I, I initiate the fight, I kind of want to pop a decoy. Then you got another me. Damn, what he's the good fuck? Looking. How did he get over there? <laughs> okay, hold on. We're going to run it back. We're going to run it back. Once I get my decoy back, hold on. Hold on. Two. One. Okay. Sending out another me. So I kinda Damn, wanna looking. I kinda wanna throw a decoy in front of me. Not too far. Extremely close to me, but not really super close to the enemy. So I throw a decoy in front of me. Then I shoot the decoy, pop the old. Also right here, right in front of me. And then after Using I pop the decoy escape. After I pop the ult, if he hasn't shot that decoy by now, attempt to take control of that decoy, and then maybe shoot him again, and then move with your decoys. See what I did there? You see what I just did right there? I moved into the crowd of decoys, and I made the decoys kind of like a big-ass group, and then once I left the group, the decoys spread out once more. And that's something that in certain situations you actually might not even be able to utilize because of the fact the enemy will shoot all the decoys but if they don't then that's something you want to use so watch this uh, what health is he? hold on let me just kill him so and bam goes the phone call ah. oh boy dupes o'clock moving with the crowd boom he has no idea where the fuck I go moving with the crowd we're spread out again and then move in with the crowd Try and do such, just try and do shit like that. That's really what I'm saying. Make sure that you that you try your best to move with your decoys, because the whole point of Mirage. Obviously, when I say this, you're gonna be like, "Duh, you dumb fuck." The whole point of Mirage is to confuse people, and when people do, when people do this shit, hold on. When people do this, this is not confusing. This isn't confusing. Because that person saw you shoot them. The decoys are all the way over there. They're not really near you. And then that person's just going to follow you. But you got to move with your decoys. So it's, it's easier for you to shoot, move in with the decoys, shoot again, move in with the decoys, and kind of shoot some more. That's really what I think is kind of part of his untapped potential. But uh, yeah, now we're gonna go over the decoy. Yeah, I think this place needs a little more Just me. Just the simple decoy. Um, also, I don't know how long this video has been, but um, 
I'm trying here. I'm trying to make it as short as possible, but I'm also trying to make it informative. But um, yeah, we're going to talk about the decoy. I'm actually super excited to talk about the decoy because it's my favorite part. It's my absolutely favorite part. So uh, yeah, here we go. So uh, the next part I want to talk about Mirage is just the, the regular default decoy that he's always had. So um, this, this is kind of where things are going to get extremely informative, I think. Because I think this is my favorite part, and it, it, it's the one I know most about, right? So, never, just never do this. Bam, bam. Never do that. I guess I'm running out of ideas. Because what I did wrong was I, I was at one side of a big ass open field, and I just sent the decoy straight in a line into the open field. Nobody's gonna shoot it. I promise, no one's gonna shoot it. I fucking promise you, no one will. I swear on everything, no one's gonna shoot it, because. Here's what, here's what happens. People are gonna look at that and they're they're gonna aim at it and at first think it's think it's real mirage. Then they're gonna take a second. They're gonna be like, okay, that looks like mirage, but he's he's running in a straight line. He's not strafing. He's not sliding. He's not jumping. He's not doing anything zigzagging. He's just going in a straight line in a big ass open field. That is not mirage. I'm not gonna shoot it. I'm not gonna waste my bullets and I'm not gonna give away my position. So they're not gonna shoot it, right? They will not shoot it, I promise. Something that you kind of want to do, the only way that that is acceptable is if you're behind, the real you, the real you is behind a piece of cover, okay? Say you're behind a piece of cover, say there's someone right here. Say there's someone right here, okay? Say you're behind this piece of cover, you boom, send the no decoy, bamboozle. and you shortly follow it with a peek right here. Because if there's someone right here, and then they see that decoy go down, they're going to be shooting at it right here, right? They're not going to be expecting you to peek right here. And then while they're aiming right here, that's a good opportunity for you to pop them. That's the more simplified version of it. And you, you can do this exact same thing on doorways. This is where I use it the most. Say there's a dude right here. Say this is a doorway. Pop the decoy. Bam goes the boozle. Boom. This dude is dead. This dude is fucking dead. I promise. He's dead. So, I send the decoy out. The person standing right here, there's no way in hell he is going to just not move. When he sees that decoy, he's going to do one of two things. He's going to look in its direction and follow it and not shoot it to not give away his position. Or, he's going to flick to it and shoot it. In both of those, he, this person right here, looks away from the door and kind of tracks the decoy, right? While they're tracking the decoy and, and looking at its movements, that's your opportunity to peek from the door and shoot this person, okay? But that's, that, even that doesn't have a very good success rate. What I really want you to do, even though that works, that's extremely good for a beginner, what I really want you to start picking up on is I want you to start kind of picking up on Mirage's movements before you send the decoy, okay? So, um, what can I do here? Um, okay, so for example, sometimes you can send decoys over things, right? And people will think, holy shit, that Mirage is climbing, I need to fucking shoot it. So, um, uh, hold on, how can we do this? I'm trying to think of a way to kind of set this up as a good example. So, Say there's a wall right here, right? Say that's a dude. Door right here, okay? So, I run. Get out there and bamboozle. Boom. I climbed this wall, and then now I'm running. That person right there saw this decoy fly over this wall. That's your opportunity to walk out this door and fucking pop this dude, okay? That's your opportunity. Um, so... Just right before you send the decoy, jump, and he will climb over stuff. Bam! There goes a boozle. Look at that. Or something like that. He climbs know. over stuff, and it it works. It works pretty damn well. It, that you just do that if you want to send the decoy over shit, right? But um, this next part. This next part, I would, I would, I would do almost every single time. I'm in like some sort of like tight corridor like hallway or dude just even in a building in general this is so strong this is so fucking strong when mirage is in a building okay so say um say there's a dude in here right um what i want you to do is 
when you're running, I want you to slide, then send the decoy. So, this is kind of what it looks like. Bamboozles for the fools. That was better in my mind. Do you see how fast that fucking decoy zoomed across that fucking floor? That's because when you slide and send the decoy while in that animation, the decoy will copy exactly what you're doing, right? So let's say there's a dude, there was a dude standing like right here, looting a box, and he sees this fucking mirage, or he hears him even just zoom across the floor. He's gonna, he's gonna freak the, he's gonna freak the fuck out because it's zooming so fast, it looks too real, and he's gonna shoot it. And that's a good opportunity for the real Mirage, who is still back here, to pop him and kill him. It's very easy. It's so, I, like, do it every time you have the chance. It's so good. It's so fucking good. Holy shit. Just... Send in a decoy. Wait, like that. No, I'm not the decoy. Like that. Or, well, obviously, maybe do it with your gun out, but, you know, when you send the decoy, maybe do it with your gun out. I just kind of did it because I forgot to get it out here. I'll do it again. I'll show you. <laughs> So you run, slide, Sending out my decoy. and then shoot. It look it it looks too real and it goes too fast. It's almost impossible for the person in that example to really tell if that's a decoy or not. It's super hard. It is really hard, like dumb hard. Um. Also, I guess side note. No, I guess I'm I'm not on that yet. Never mind. I'll shut up. Um. I guess one more thing I kind of want to go over about his decoy is um, the Send ability. Send the decoy. Okay, wait. How do I know that I'm not the decoy? All right, this is dream within a dream stuff. The ability to control the decoys. So the way, or the, I, if I'm being completely honest, I don't use this feature often. It has use though. I just don't use it all too much. Um, a pretty good way to use it is to kind of send a decoy in front of you. Get to bamboozling. Make sure it's like a, it's an okay distance ahead of you. Take control of it, and then just kind of do this. Say you know there's people in there. Your decoy will go up. They'll be spraying at this dude. And then there will be a second dude coming from this side to spray them. You know what I'm saying? Also, you can do this. So you can uh, while controlling it, you can boom slide, and then uh, you can do that as well. So there. There's a lot of versatility when it comes with this thing, but I feel like it's so much versatility that I just quite haven't discovered myself yet. Um, that's really the only thing. I just don't use this often. Because, um, like I said, it totally has a use. I just don't really like it all that much. I totally understand it. Um, I just I, I, I feel like I don't have the time to really use it. The only time that I... I, I always use it when I activate my ult. Um... Because it it just it leads for more it just it's more decoys running around everywhere you know what I'm saying? Because if you if you do this Bamboozles and then activate the the ult, it's a, it works it you right. You know what I'm saying? You got Tubes all the these, you got all these decoys right here running around and this one just standing still. But if you take control of it, it's an extra it's an extra decoy for your uh, enemy to shoot. So it's just it's just a little more confusing to them, right? So yeah, kind of like I'm doing now. Just keep it ahead of you, control it. It, it's kind of there to make sure what the hell you're about to walk into is safe. You can use it that way. See? Pretty good. Pretty good, right? Um, also, you kind of have to get used to controlling something that isn't actually you. So like that, and then now it's kind of going up there. You, you kind of have to get used to that. It is something really weird, but um, honestly, I can't really tell you how to do it. Because, honestly... It's just, it's it will happen. It will happen organically, I promise. It, you'll get used to it. It's hard, but it'll happen eventually, I promise you. Um, um, so then I guess all I have to talk about now is his passive, which I guess will be kind of short, but uh, yeah, I think that's all we want to say about the decoy right now. But um, yeah, okay, well then we're going to move on to the next part. Before I talk about the passive, I want to say... Um, if you see a golden knockdown shield or a golden backpack, you can totally use those. Mirage benefits from them. He really does. Because with his revive, he uh, benefits from uh, this backpack. And because he goes invisible, as soon as he um, goes down, he benefits from the knockdown shield as well. Um, so yeah, that's all I kind of wanted to say for that. But we're going to get into the passive now, which um, uh, 
is uh, automatically cloak when using respawn beacons and reviving teammates. So, um, I actually I actually wasn't gonna talk about the the respawn beacon thing because it isn't really too notable. But um, I guess I can do this. Um, when you're about to revive someone on the respawn beacon, this is what I usually do. Pretend this is a respawn beacon. Um, so I'm running up to the respawn beacon to revive my uh, trash ass wraith main, right? So then I would send a decoy. Bam. And then. The bam. And then I'm use the respawn out of beacon. Ideas. So decoy, respawn beacon, you turn invisible, that decoy is still running in a straight line. Sometimes it can confuse people, but I, I just, just get into the habit of doing it, but you probably won't see a lot of benefit from it. But hey, a little bit is better than nothing, you know what I'm saying? Um, but really, where the real, where the, where the real magic happens is with his revive, right? When he revives people, he is cloaked as long as long with the person that is re that he's reviving um uh, i believe it's the same speed as every other revive minus um the gibby um dome revive and the lifeline drone revive but um other than that i think it's the regular speed of a normal revive here's something that i would actually kind of recommend doing um say my teammate is down right here I'm kind of getting chased. Here's what I recommend doing. I'm getting chased. I turn the corner, send decoy, start the revive. The person that comes around this corner will hear the revive, but he'll see the decoy running. So he'll kind of scoot up a little bit and start shooting the decoy right here. The second this person does this, I want you to stop the revive and shoot this dude in the back. That's what you want to do, right? So. I'm getting chased, turn the corner, send the decoy, Bam, start the revive. The, Bam. the person I'm, I'm that was chasing ideas. me is going to come around the corner, see that decoy, the second that person starts shooting it, you want to stop the revive, and then boom, do the burst damage, get him down really quick. Um, so you can use it as an opportunity to kind of trick the person that is chasing you, or just really trick anyone. You don't have to use it for the sake of reviving your teammate you can use it to benefit yourself you don't have to use it to um... you don't have to strictly use it just as a revive tool you can use it to just say hey, hey i want to fucking go invisible for a second that's what i'm gonna do there's no fucking way that shit just happened are you fucking joking i guess it was good timing because i was pretty much done anyway I, I don't really have anything else to say but um... really if you have any tips that i left out in the video please type in the comments because when people watch sorry my fault when people will watch this video they'll be like okay and then obviously th they'll see the top comment and then hopefully that top comment will be a, a hopeful tip that I did not say in this video specifically so um, really just drop your ideas your thoughts and then um tell me what other characters you'd like to see me see this for I would love to do this for all the characters eventually but um Really, I, I can do a cost of guide on this channel. I did one on my old channel, but it's kind of outdated, and the, the meta shifted a little bit. Um, so uh, I'd be totally down to do it again, kind of like an updated one. But, um, I mean, yeah, other than that, I think that's all I really want to say. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it, honestly. Um, uh, I'm glad that this is kind of a longer video, and I'm, I hope you guys kind of sat and just watched it because I tried to make it as short as possible, but I also really, really wanted to get all my messages across, so I tried to make it also extremely informative, so I tried to make, uh, I, tried to, I tried to get straight to the point, no intros or anything like that, but, um, yeah, um, do enjoy. Um, I hope you liked it. I hope it helps you. I definitely think it will, at least a little bit. Um, if it doesn't help you absolutely whatsoever, feel free to drop a dislike. However, I'm very confident that it will help you, so please, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Remember, friends, stay awesome.